We're really close, so let's finish up these layouts so we can animate. Let's go! I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. We have a few things left that we need to prep and lay out to help us when we get to the animation phase. Let's get to it so we can get to the fun part of making things move and playing with curves. Artboard 3 is gonna steal some elements from uh, 2, including player name, phone screen, background, copy, paste, put the controller up top, and go ahead and come up here and make sure we lock that again so that we can use it. And background, phone screen up top, phone screen down below. All right, so what are our colors here? Let's get that all laid out. So we need light blue as the background. So color, search bar, light blue. Then our phone screen. Uh, I guess we have a, a text player name. I'm going to just turn that off. So player name is, let's hit E to open up the fill. And that color is correct because this is just a blown up version of what we had at the end of Artboard 2. Right? And so then we have another element here that let's see with the phone screen let's just size this up and we can use that as our dark blue background so let's go ahead and just change the color so color dark blue i write and so player name we're gonna have a fill and we're gonna have a stroked version. So let's go back into our project here. We have our player name. So let's rename this one to fill. And we're also gonna have a stroke version. So in the stroked version, I'm gonna highlight this and go over here to our solid color and just click the no button here, which is gonna turn our stroke on. And we can just change this to white. I really don't have to change this red, but it's gonna bug me if I don't. So it's all the same color. There we go. All right, so that's stroke. We have one that's stroke, we have one that's filled. And if I hit tab, I can go back to artboard three. Make sure you save. Save, 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 save. Okay. So now I have my player name Phil. So now that I've split this out to one's Phil and one's Stroke, if I highlight Stroke and I have Phil selected down here and I hold Alter Option and drag Stroke over the top of Phil, it's going to change it out. And it probably would have been helpful to see that. So let me undo. So I have the pink in the middle here. So I want to change this out to Stroke. So I'm going to hold Alter Option and drag over the top, and it's gonna change it out for me. And I actually want, I don't want this phone screen too, because that's a different size than what I have. Great. So there we go. And I wanted this to be a little bit different size, so it's shrinking down, still scaling up. And then we need to add the next layer. So let's go ahead and duplicate this whole line. Drag this to the top and phone screen three, the color needs to be pink. So let's go make that happen. If I highlight the stroke and I hit E, fill it with the dark blue and again i'm going to go back up to my project because i want this to be fill instead of stroke for the player name so if i hold alter option drag it over the top and it updates for us except i need to scale all of this down 
There we go. Should just call this one ten. Make it even. I like even numbers. All right. And so then I also need to bring in my cutout, right? And let's just go ahead and go into effects controls, unlock this. So I get to the effect controls for this layer and we're gonna generate a fill. Perfect. So now I can hit E and reveal this and hit my controller again, relock the colors and pick whip up to my primary color. And if I scale this down, there we go. And I can use the same phone screen alpha mat for this as well. Cool, I think that's pretty close. Oop, I didn't change the text. So let's go ahead and change the stroke text. Let's just hit E, fill, and make sure that pink is actually the primary color. That looks better. Perfect. All right, on to Artboard 4. So this is the final reveal. So we need a square. So let's nav this last one that we created. Phone screen three, artboard four, paste it. Pretty close. I'm just gonna scale it up a little bit. Okay, obviously you can tell the color is wrong. So let's search color and pick whip to accent color, click off of it, and we also need the background, so copy that, artboard 4, paste it, put it at the very bottom, and we also need to change this color to pink. And I'm not going to copy her cutout because it's so different from the last one, so let's go ahead and drop her in here. And we're just going to make this super big. She's just a, a background element, so I'm not too worried about making the size wrong um, or different or anything like that. So I think we ended up with an overlay here at like 12%. And we can go up here and also, let's unlock. We can also right click in the effects panel. And we can add a levels here to kind of crush the image a little bit, make it stand out a little bit more. The other thing we can do, we can play around with, is um, adding a color correction in black and white. So what happens if we put the black and white on top? So your effects panel is going to go from top to bottom. So if you make it black and white, first. You can see red skin tone. So if I push that a little bit and push this a little bit, kind of getting a little bit more of an outline, which I kind of like. Uh, there we go. It's almost a little blown out in the middle, which is Kind of nice, because then you just kind of get some of her features without being overpowering on that. So let's do that, and I'm going to scale her up a little bit more. You just want her to kind of be looking like she just dropped big numbers, play of the game. So try and push push it a little bit there so that some of her features stand out but they don't overpower the text and the stats um, because that's that's really the hero of the shot. So let's go ahead and add the hero text now. So PTS and I was still on that so let's turn it off. There we go. And let's see how close we are. Uh, let's make it 175. Okay, that looks good. 
pretty close. And I'm actually going to add a fill to this too. So if I right click in the effects control panel, generate fill, that way it's a lot easier for me to control um, than trying to change all the colors uh, over here. So let's do the same song and dance. And I want this to be the primary color. So when I duplicate this, it's going to maintain that color that's tied to this controller. So that makes my life a little bit easier going forward. All right, so points. And I'm going to hit my right arrow all the way over and just make sure that my kerning here is good. So let me turn off the transparency here. If I hold Alter Option and hit my left arrow key, that's going to separate these a little bit more. I'm trying to get that spacing the same again. So, okay. Turn this back on so I can fly through the rest of this. So points, let's change this to AST. And make sure we line it up. And the kerning here isn't great either. So alter option, I'm going to go two on that one. And two on that one, just so that the P and T, S and T kind of look the same. All right, let's duplicate. And this last one is R, E, B. Let's turn this back on so I line it up correctly. I'm holding shift to constrain when I drag it down. Scroll wheel in. And let's just get that looking right. All right, turn off the solo. And double click so I can do the kerning. One, two, one, two. All right, solo this again. So now we just need to make sure that we set this up right. You can see down in my lower right hand corner here, the paragraph is set to left justify, which is exactly what we want for these three. But when I duplicate and change the number, uh, let's see, 35. I want to move this to right justify. And that's so when I change, and I'm going to make sure I get this right. Actually, let me unsolo this. You can see it. When I change the number here, it's going to start from the right side and change so that that doesn't matter what number I type here. It's always going to stay on that right side, which is where I want it. Cool. And maybe I'll current that once too. Cool. Um, assist. Let's make that 10. And again, make sure we're all lined up here. Hit V, drag it over. And oh, I need to make it right justified. And let's make sure we kern that to just one. And then the last one, rebound number is 12. And I'm going to move this over. Let's make sure it's right justified. And then we're going to go back in and kern one. OK. So well, now that I turn this off, I'm going to hit Command R to pull up my ruler, and I just want to make sure that things are, are lined up here. So I'm going to use the edge of the 5 there, the 35. Maybe I should make them all 35 here so that they're consistent. It's a good idea. So I'm going to go back up to the 5, use the very, very end point. Just make the 10, 35, make sure that that's, that lines up. Cool. And the 36, 35, great. And I'm holding shift to constrain and it's 
it's going to snap to that ruler. Okay. So now I know I'm good. So change this to 10 and change this back to 12. Okay. So now everything is lined up exactly right. So let's turn off the solo. And there we go. So that looks like you didn't do anything for the last half hour. You have everything back to square one. And that's the beauty of this. So now we're fully set up and we can begin to animate. So take a break and let's get ready to jump in, make things move and finish this thing off.